let it be known, I outgrew my Superman skeevies way back in the late 1980s. But hearing that line in 1994 struck a chord with me. The Blue Album would become one of the earliest albums I connected with on a deeper level. Certain temperaments lead one to take on self-deprecation as a mask to cover deep insecurities and self-doubt. This is something I know quite well. To many, the latter traits aren't always that obvious, and the result is the protagonist being cast as a funny guy. This is the story about one such guy, and a song he wrote that has become somewhat of a nerdy, geeky anthem. So of course, this nerd rock anthem was inspired by a college professor. Today, I am looking at the tragedy of Undone, the Sweater Song by Weezer, off of their 1994 album simply titled The Blue Album. Let's dig in. Chapter 1, The Inspiration. Before any other, there was Undone. It was the first Weezer song Rivers Cuomo wrote. Commenting on the song in Rolling Stone, he noted inspiration was drawn from the Velvet Underground. I was trying to write a Velvet Underground type song because I was super into them and I came up with that guitar riff. I just picked up that acoustic guitar, and the first thing I played was that riff. And it just feels so classic to me. Even now, when the band starts to play it, it just takes over the energy in the room. It wasn't until years after I wrote it that I realized it's almost a complete riff-off of Sanitarium by Metallica. It just perfectly encapsulates Weezer to me. You're trying to be cool like Velvet Underground, but your metal roots just pump through unconsciously. Chapter 2, The Professor. Cuomo wrote the song in 1991. Working at the time at Tower Records in LA, he had met his bandmates on the job and they started floating around the local scene. But grunge was the dominant theme in the early 1990s and nothing seemed to land. The riff was set, but it wasn't until Rivers was sitting at his community college in English 101 that Undone became a full-fledged song. Inspiration came from the professor's analogy of a thesis statement. This is from American Songwriter. His professor explained the importance of a thesis statement and used the analogy of pulling a thread in someone's sweater. If they walk away, the entire sweater will unravel. The professor said a thesis statement holds on to the thread throughout an essay. Cuomo has noted that it was supposed to be a sad song, but everyone thinks it's hilarious. We'll get into the tragedy soon. Chapter 3, The Sweater. The original title was just undone. At live shows, people would request the sweater song. So when it came time to add it to the track list on the album, it just made sense to Cuomo to append that to the song's name. You'll see it depicted a few ways, but there's really just one correct way. Cuomo didn't like how it looked with parentheses, so he used a dash instead. An interesting aside, the music video directed by Spike Jones blatantly excludes the presence of a sweater altogether. Chapter 4, The Tragedy. The chatter and banter at the beginning and in the middle, well, that's a recording of bassist Matt Sharp and collaborator Carl Koch. What originally was placeholder for sci-fi clips became part of the song when Geffen wouldn't foot the cost for some samples. In a way, in my opinion, it almost works better. The two discussing a party, talking about bands they like. For the insecure, for the nerd, these seemingly minute interactions can produce quite the anxiety if you talk about parties at all. Here are the lyrics. If you want to destroy my sweater, hold onto this thread as I walk away. Watch me unravel, I'll soon be naked. Lying on the floor, lying on the floor, I've come undone. When you read them outside of the context of the music, there's incredible vulnerability here. The unraveling nature of trying to fit in. You become a bit of a chameleon, altering elements of yourself to become a mold of what you feel would be more accepted by the in-crowd. In the end, you're left a bit naked and exposed. Humor is often the result, a placeholder for the true you, a self-deprecating mask that hides the insecurities. And here, Rivers lays it all out, blatantly and with a hefty dose of comedy. What you get is an image of a grown man wearing a nerdy sweater, which is unraveling until all that's left is him standing there with 
his pale white skin and nerdy black rimmed glasses, and of course, far too tight, tidy whitey Superman underwear. The opposite of heroic and the opposite of cool. That's the tragedy of Undone the Sweater Song. And that most people think it's just a funny song as opposed to something that is much deeper, much more vulnerable, and quite personal. What about the Blue Album as a whole? Chapter 5. The Album. In many ways, the insecurities and unraveling is symbolic of the Blue Album. In the three decades since its release, it's become a bit of an anthemic album, packed with now classics that have molded and shaped nerd rock. Produced by Rick Ocasek of The Cars, the Blue Album is the epitome of an attempt to be cool, and it was actually wildly successful in that attempt. Dig into the Blue Album, and you can find traces of Rivers' vulnerability, his insecurities, and his fears. And they tend to be monumentally anthemic and doused in hints of humor at each turn. These things hide the depth of the songs within. Undone the Sweater Song was the band's first single from their first album. But it wasn't a one-off, nor were the thematic elements and layered in humor. The third single, Say It Ain't So, covers childhood fears of Rivers' stepdad leaving the family like his alcoholic dad did when he was just four years old. Here are the lyrics. Somebody's hiney is crowding my icebox. Somebody's cold one is giving me chills. Guess I'll just close my eyes. So he finds a beer in the fridge and it terrifies him. Heine, in this case, is not a euphemism for the rear end. The word itself does spark a bit of humor. Similarly, dig into the lyrics of My Name is Jonas and you get a sense of youthful anxiety. And of course, Undone the Sweater Song. I was just spinning it. And as I'm listening to it, I get this keen sense of the song's simplicity, of its almost youthful adolescent nature. It is easy, it is simple. It pushes those humorous elements down your throat until you can't help but think, man, this is just a humorous song. But as you dig deeper into the actual psyche and the history of Rivers Cuomo, it becomes something else. Chapter 6, The Legacy. In a different article recounting the 30th anniversary of the album in American Songwriter, the author notes, you might agree that the music is subjective and perfect is impossible, but you'd be wrong. If you want to know what a perfect album sounds like, listen to the Blue Album. I think it's fitting. Who would have thought 30 years on this album would still resonate so deeply? Who would have thought it would continue to have such a great impact and across generations at that? No, it's not an album I pull out all too often to put on my turntable. And no, it's not one I go on about like say, Siamese Dream by the Smashing Pumpkins. But it is truly a great record, and it's one that definitely shaped my listening habits and my youthful experience in music. A year later, that band I mentioned, the Smashing Pumpkins, would release a stunning masterpiece in Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. The same year that this was released, Portishead would release their phenomenal trip-hop album, Dummy. Next, join me as I dig into both of those albums and share some very interesting things that you might not have known. As one commenter said many moons ago, this dude is a damn nerd. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl channel, and I'll see you in the next video.